What's up you guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be hella TMI moments. So, a lot of you are asking me about prison hygiene, or periods, or razors, or what do you do in the shower, do you have this, do you have that? All kinds of questions, right? And I thought, you know what? Give the people what they want. <laughs> so I'm gonna be spilling all the tea when it comes to prison hygiene today, and girl problems, and that time of the month, and all kinds of things. So if you are a guy, and you do not want to hear this, now is your time, bro. Click off this video, I'll see you in the next one, but this video is not for you. Uh, if you are a girl, and you want to know how you survive in prison, <laughs> just keep on watching. Total side note, how cute is this hoodie? Like, it's like kind of oversized. I got it on sale yesterday for $18. So I think Hollister is still having that sale, and it's like hella soft. I would never pay full price for this though. Like, just keeping it real. I am really excited about sales when like shit goes on sale and something that costs $50 only costs 18. So, you know, go check out Hollister. Okay, that's not what this video is about though. So, oh you guys, this is crazy. And I wanna talk about this for two reasons. One, you guys are asking me. And two, because prisons do not tailor to women. And I understand prison is not supposed to be a vacation. I know prison is not supposed to be fun. I know it's not supposed to be good. I know that prison's supposed to be difficult to deter people from not wanting to break the law. I understand that. I also took full responsibility for my actions and I deserved that prison sentence. So if I make a lighthearted joke about prison or if I say something that doesn't seem like I'm taking responsibility for it, that is really just me joking with you guys. And I never want a lighthearted comment or a little joke here and there to make you guys think that I am glorifying prison or that I think I'm thug or a gangster or whatever. That is not me. And I really hope I do not come across like that to anyone because that is genuinely not me. Prison is a horrible place and my last bid was just really hard. And um, if I make a joke or I'm lighthearted about it, that's just who I am. It's just who I am. I didn't spend my prison sentence depressed or crying in the corner. I spent my prison sentence trying to make the best of a really bad situation, which I recommend to anyone in any situation, in prison or outside of prison. I think we need to live each day like it's our last, and I had that same mentality in prison, and that was survival above anything else, but then to just be happy in really bad situations, and that takes growth, maturity, and something that I've always had. It just takes this extra bit of I don't even know. It takes it takes more to be happy in an unhappy situation than it is to just sit there and sulk and be depressed. Okay, rant over, but that's literally just who I am, you guys. So, moving on. Let's start with razors, okay? So, a lot of people are like, can you shave in prison? Do you get razors? Can you buy them on the commissary? Do they hand them out? So, listen. I've been at facilities that make you sign out a razor. So you would go up to the guard station, ask for a razor, sign your name, and they would hand you a razor. And you only get that razor for a time frame, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and they are expecting that razor back. So you have to go back when you're done with the razor, they check to see if the blade's in there and they cross your name off. Those facilities are like really strict with it. But I've also been in facilities that have razor lists. Okay, which is kind of weird. So once a week, they hand out razors to people that are on the list. And I'll get to that in a second. This is what is called issuance. So once a week, they would give you toilet paper, which women are only allowed to have three rolls of toilet paper in certain facilities that I have been at. And if you're a girl, that's not enough, okay? <laughs> it's just not enough. My, that might work for a man. That does not work for a woman. So anyway, you get three rolls of toilet paper, little bar of soap, toothpaste, toothpaste, glue, that they call toothpaste, disgusting, um, and then a little toothbrush, and you get like hygiene items, okay? So shampoo is not on that list, by the way. Um, and then you'd get a razor. Now there would be people in that facility that were on razor restriction, and what that is, is if they had been caught cutting themselves, or if they got caught with a weapon that had a razor, they would be put on a restricted list, okay? Now this makes no sense because you would see people buying razors on the commissary and they also could not buy the razors on commissary if they were on the restricted list. Commissary is let known of that, the housing officers know the list, whatever. But other people in the barracks can buy razors, so um, what sense does it make to have some people on razor restriction and not others? I'm saying that because you could very easily hustle up a razor if you really wanted them. I'm a hustler till the day I die, okay? <laughs> I hustled everything. However, this is the one thing I would not sell or give away. I would have women come up to me like, oh, please let me just get that razor, let me get that razor. I'll pay this, I'll pay that. It's the one thing I wouldn't sell because women cut themselves. 
and it just made me really sad that they are so i mean prison's a really dark place you guys okay um they were so depressed upset alone and they were in so much pain that that was the only release of of pain that they could find that broke my heart and that's the one thing i would never sell or give away i have had razors stolen for me but um all in all, I just would not give a razor away or sell a razor. And that was a really tough thing because that's a valuable commodity, okay? You could do anything with that razor. You can make a weapon out of that razor. The girl could just want to shave her legs or the girl could want to cut herself. It was just a risk I wasn't willing to take and I didn't want to see people hurt themselves or make a weapon and come back and hurt me. You never know. So just a safe, just a safe bet for me to say no to everyone when it came to razors. Okay, number two. Listen, I don't even talk about periods with Reese or like anyone in my family. I think I was just raised around dudes. I just don't talk about it. But here I am sitting on the internet telling everyone about periods in prison. <laughs> so prisons do not tailor to women. Now New York facilities will give you pads and tampons. Arkansas, nope, no. I've been in county jails that give pads, but no underwear. Riddle me that, Arkansas. <laughs> um, but a lot of prisons, like I said, don't tailor to women and they would not give you tampons, but women and inmates in general are very clever and creative and they will find a way. And women would make tampons out of pads. And I would show this to you guys, but I went to the store looking for pads and I cannot find anything like what they sold on commissary or gave away, um, gave away, issued to women that were on their period. They're like very, they're very cheap. They're one size fits all, which trust me, that doesn't work. Uh, we're all different. <laughs> so we would have to take the pad. We would take it apart. The outer part of the pad would go to make the outside of the tampon to protect you from cotton. And you'd roll it up. You'd wash your hands. You'd roll it up. You'd put the outside of the pad over the cotton and you'd make a little string. And that is how we made tampons. It was a requirement. They put you all in white. They make you work for 12 hours with like two breaks in between. And if you're, if it's that time of the month, you need to go to the bathroom a few more times than that, right? And that was just cruel. I mean, it was really cruel. So I even had COs, if they would see me making tampons, they would take them away from me because there is a rule in prison that if you take something and you alter it or you change it, that is called contraband. So they had every right to take away tampons when they saw them made. Um, some women officers would do this too. It was not just men. I saw female correctional officers taking away tampons and that would always make me so mad. Like, girl, you understand what we're going through. You know how hard this is and you're taking my tampons away. So um, that was also a hustle. Some women would pay other women to make them. I was personally like, uh, no, thank you. I'm gonna wash my hands and make them myself. But this is just something that I had to do. Now you could buy tampons on the commissary, but they cost like $10 for a small pack of tampons. It's expensive and it was just a luxury that I did not have. And it was actually a luxury that most women, even if they had money, were not gonna spend their money on that because they could just make their own. So another thing I wanna mention about tampons and pads and that time of the month is a lot of the guards, when you go up and ask them for pads, they would give you one or maybe two. And then if they see you coming back in a couple hours asking for more, they would yell at you and tell you, I just gave you some. Like, it was a lot of men doing that. Like, bro, do you not understand how it works? Like, I need more than two to make it through the night. But they didn't understand or they didn't care. And I saw a lot of that going on. Over the course of me going in and out of jails, I really only saw one or two officers that were kind enough to be like, girl, how many do you need? Like, I got you. You need 20, I'll give you 20. Um, but that was very, very rare. In New York, they would give you a, they'd hold up a box and they'd say, you need tampons or pads and you just grab however many you, you want, you know? I mean, they, they understood a little bit better in New York that like we are on our, it's that time of the month, we need this. Let me say this too. Okay, so I was at a medium security prison one time and girls, I saw them on birth control. I know, this is like, whatever. So I would see them and I'm like, how did you get that? How did you get that? I didn't want it because I'm having sex. I wanted it because I could regulate my period and I knew when it was coming because it's really difficult to live your life in prison when you don't have pads or tampons and I just wanted my period regulated. So I knew what to say to get that. I don't know if they're still allowing that, but birth control doesn't just serve the purpose of 
um, unplanned pregnancy. It doesn't just, it's not just birth control. It helps women a lot with their periods. It helps them with their skin, acne, things like that. So there are other medical reasons to use birth control other than sex. So I learned what to say to the doctor to get on birth control. However, when I got sent to a maximum security prison, they took it away. So, you know, uh, it sucks. And it's really, really hard to be a female in prison. Another thing that I wanna say is women get talked down to, mentally abused, physically abused all the time in prison. And it's just something that we need to talk more about. Um, I'm not saying that it's easier to be a man in a man's prison. I'm just saying it's different. Women are treated like trash in prison and no one cares. This is my personal experience. I don't know if your prison was different. I don't know if the federal prisons are different. This is just my experience. They don't care what you're going through. Um, I remember sitting in the chow hall, and this is kind of taking a turn, but I remember sitting in the chow hall pregnant and they only give you 15 minutes to eat, but that 15 minutes is really like nine minutes. Like they want you out so fast. I was trying to eat, but I was getting nauseous and I was pregnant and I'm trying to eat because I know I don't have any commissary. I don't have any food. It's the end of the day. There's no other meal. And I was eating and the guard goes, can't let's go. And he's yelling at me and I'm like, I'm not done. And he said, I said, let's go. I took one more bite. He grabbed my tray and threw it out. You guys, like, I don't, I don't know if he knew I was pregnant because I was wearing bigger, like a bigger uniform. And when I stood up, like I was kind of, I'm kind of small. So I don't know if he really could tell, but I was so upset and I was pregnant. I started to cry when I was on my way back to the barracks and this other guard saw me, like they didn't see the situation in the chow hall. The housing unit officer said, girl, you better suck it up. Like, you don't even know what just happened to me. I'm starving, my baby is starving, and that's where my mind is going. I'm like, I'm starving, my baby's starving, my baby's starving, I'm obsessing over it, I'm freaking out, I can't just move on instantly. And I'm just like, I'm fine. You guys, you can't even talk like that to the guards. My attitude was just crap, and I was upset, I was bitter, I was angry of the situation. Full responsibility for my actions, but it was a really difficult thing that I was going through. Even after I had my daughter, my hygiene, was not was not to par they would give me um a couple of pads at a time now when you just have a baby you need more than that they wouldn't let me have the hospital issued underwear they wouldn't let me have the hospital care kit that they wanted to send home they're just really they're really rigid and it sucks it's really hard to be a woman even with the toilet paper you guys three rolls of toilet paper like i would have to hustle toilet paper it's crazy and that was just one of the things that really boggled me because when when we have to worry about our survival and we're always thinking about toilet paper and tampons and pads and food and survival we are not focused on rehabilitation we're not focused on getting our life together we're focused on getting tampons i mean it's crazy and then you're pushing people into society that are not ready that have ptsd from being physically mentally emotionally abused in prison talked down to treated like dirt we're pushing them into society a society that is not welcoming a society that says we're, we're not going to rent to you we're not going to hire to you because you're a felon you made a mistake 10 years ago so we're not going to hire you it's hard it is really hard however it is not impossible it might be 10 times harder for felons to get their shit together but i am not a statistic and if i can get my life together if i can escape from that world and live outside of prison successfully sober and happy you can too i know it's hard but you just have to want it more than anyone else and i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i just want you all to know that no mistake is too great not to recover and bounce back yes i made a lot of mistakes in my past but I learned from those mistakes. I will never repeat those mistakes. And I am very proud to say that I'm off of parole and I am never going back to prison. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, and I will see you in my next video.